Imagine finding a zero day in the login functionality of the world's biggest company. Or randomly waking up one month and deciding you'd like to make $30,000 in bounties in just 30 days. You can't imagine that, can you? You can't possibly fathom. Because I can't. These seem to be unique circumstances reserved only for a select few. In this video, I had a chat with one of those select few, Pafouk Jain, a senior security engineer at Certus and a prominent bug hunter. Pafouk mainly hacks on HackerOne and has 157 valid findings with thanks from large companies such as Yahoo, Meta, Yelp, Udemy, Instacart, Bumble, Spotify, Rockstar Games, among other companies. Before we dive into it though, excuse the audio from my end, I was having the worst day on the planet. And I will also be doing a separate video talking about the technicalities of the $100,000 bounty. So look out for that. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the interview. Peace. Let's start with the speed round for those people that have very short attention spans. Do you look for one specific bug class or do you look for multiple bugs? I look for multiple bugs. Do you have a top three? Um, it's uh, account takeovers, if they exist, uh, SSRFs, and uh, cross-origin resource sharing course, or CSRFs in general. Okay, that's cool. Do you currently do any CTFs or have you have done CTFs in the past? No, I haven't done any CTFs. Should one start on a VDB program or a public program? Bug bounty program, not a VDB. Okay. Certifications, yes or no? No. No. <laughs> that's going to be a fun one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's the longest time you've gone actively hunting and not found anything? Uh, not, not too long, probably a week. Just a week? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you find bugs pretty often then. All right. Last speed run question. Would you consider yourself lucky when it comes to bug bounty? Sort of. Yes. Yes. Okay. We can get into that. But now that we're done with the speed questions, those that are willing to stay for the longer interview, Let's get started. What is your background? Where are you based? Have you always been interested in security? Do you have any previous jobs that aren't IT or security related? Uh, so my name is Bhavok. I am from Delhi, India. Yeah. Uh, I started Bug Bounties in 2017 as a part-time gig and I was doing full-time development work building mobile applications, particularly iOS. And that's what I leveraged in security in bug bounties, particularly. Okay. Did you do anything else before development, iOS development? You said iOS development, right? Yes, I, that, that was my full-time job. I started my career okay. as a developer and then I progressed into security. Okay. Is it safe to say then that, um, you prefer hunting on programs with mobile applications? Yep. iOS specifically. Okay. iOS specifically, iOS. Okay. Um, while we're on that, let's get into a bit about the iOS zero day you found. You were paid out about $100,000 from Apple, which is absolutely insane. Um, were you looking for a zero day or were you just doing your normal hunting? Um, uh, so I have found a lot of, uh, issues with OAuth implementations and, um, in most of the applications and, um, there generally exist some misconfigurations that allows account takeovers. I have written a blog, uh, on signing with Facebook and signing with Google, what misconfiguration yeah. present. So I'm always interested in OAuth stuff and at that point of time, Signing with Apple was relatively new. So I wanted to have a look how it works, how it is implemented. And uh, while testing this particular thing, I found I can sign JWTs with any uh, email IDs and that 
probably lead to account takeovers. So it's more of a JWT issue considering you could change the signature then? I could not change the signature, but I could sign JWTs for any given email IDs. Uh, okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. And Apple was generating signatures for that. How long did that um, take to, you know, submit the bug, get the payout, and then them allowing you to publish, publicize everything? So uh, when I found this bug, uh, I submitted it within an hour. Uh, Apple responded after one and a half days and yes. fixed the very same day. Um, the time to get the bounty was around two to three months. Uh, but I was informed earlier that I would qualify for the bounty, but nothing was mentioned about what will be the amount. I got it after two three months. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then um, back then, that was 2019, and you said you started in 2017. That's been about eight years now that you've been hunting. We're in 2024 now. What do you think the difference is between your methodology back then and now? Have you drastically changed methodologies, or do you still just do the same thing? I, I, I think it's pretty much similar what I used to do like a couple of years back as well. So when I started in 2017 in bug bounties, I was only doing iOS at that point because I I didn't have any experience with FIP. Uh, I did not know what is CSRF or what are subdomain takeovers. I was primarily focused on iOS applications, but uh, I started learning more about web stuff and changed my ways of hacking around that time. Uh, so that's pretty much I did. Uh, yeah. Okay, so are you primarily still hacking on iOS applications then, or do you sprinkle in some web applications and other stuff? So if uh, if a program has an iOS application I'm really interested in, I first yep. try, try the iOS apps and then move on to the web part, but primarily it's iOS. Okay, how much recon do you do? Do you do a lot of scanning, information gathering, or you just straight into the application? manual testing all the way i don't do recon i just see you don't do recon what's present in the application okay so most of this is like manual testing do you have any like favorite burp plugins uh mostly manual but i do a bit of automation as well um but regarding your uh, the favorite plugins uh there's uh uh I don't remember the name. Uh, it's for privilege escalation test. It's it's pretty cool. Listen, I don't know that one. I know most people will mention like authorize or something like that for authorization testing. I mean, it, there's a tool. I think uh, I I used to use authorized, but I found some other tool that is better than this. Uh, at least for me, it, it's auth analyzer. Auth analyzer. Yeah. Okay. Do you do anything related to like desktop applications or uh, host testing? And by host, I mean like, do you get like IPs and just start scanning ETC or do you not look at that at all? Not really. I mostly do the web part, web application and test and APIs. Okay. Well, when you do start, like, let's say you're starting a mobile application or a web application, or maybe you can touch on both aspects what's like your checklist or what steps do you take do you start using the application like a user and then map out the flows how do you map out flows if so and then what's the first thing you start looking at does it just depend on the application um yeah just touch on that so starting with um if i'm testing an ios application i will do a static analysis i have my own uh, static analyzer for that that does stuff and tries to exploit certain things if it does uh, if it reports anything interesting uh, I dig deeper manually and see uh, what's happening after the automated scanning I try to use the mobile application as a regular user try to understand what the application is about uh, what are the critical areas uh, of the application 
according to their business needs uh you, you can understand so yeah when i'm testing out so when i'm testing out uh, after doing the uh automated scanning i try to use the mobile application as a regular user and try to identify um what are the critical areas of the application as uh, in 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 respect to that particular application and try to find issues around those areas so that's my strategy to then find them there. okay and i would assume it's the same case when you are testing a web application yeah pretty much same pretty much the same okay um if someone comes up to you and says uh bavuk you've made a lot of money bug money i'd like to get started what would you tell them what direction would you point them in would you just tell them to dive straight into a program and look for bugs or would you tell them to learn a particular bug class and look for that everywhere what what would you tell someone who wants to get started um so if i take my example i've started out as a developer i think yeah. having a developer knowledge is very beneficial when you're starting in bug bounties um because you you learn the basic stuff so it really helps out so if someone wants to test web applications i would suggest them to test out uh like learn to make web applications first how like like a basic one apis the way databases post it on a server and you you will understand a lot of things uh when when you're implementing those things and you can apply the same knowledge uh in our game so you said you don't do ctfs and you don't do you you say no to certifications is that the reason why you'd rather someone build something and learn how it's built and then try break it uh the reason i i do not do ctfs is um i i, I think uh i'm pretty comfortable with bug bounties i can find bugs easily on them not yeah easy, but uh uh i'm i'm very comfortable with bug bounties and they're kind of a they're kind of challenging to me uh so i do not see a need for me to do cdfs okay how about certifications do you just think because you had like developer knowledge and you were able to start out and find bugs you just didn't take that route is that why yes um i i think uh, the certifications that are available in the market very a lot as compared to uh the bug bounty they do not really help uh with bug bounties you still need to have a very good practical knowledge on the yeah. application systems and all um so that's why i i haven't taken any certifications and uh because i don't i i do not see it making any benefit for me in my bug bounty journey okay so if someone did ask you bavuk what certification should i take you wouldn't you tell them don't do any certification so instead of uh doing any security certifications i would suggest them to do certifications in development that would help them uh out to understand the basics yeah uh, it will help them uh breaking stuff in the future mm-hmm. That's that is an interesting take. I've never heard that one before. Fine, let's say someone does do a developer certification or they learn how to build a mobile app or a web application. When they do start bug hunting actively, how much time do you think they should give themselves until they actually find a bug? Maybe they don't have any other experience with bug bounty, but they have some security knowledge. They've done this development stuff in the back. Um how much time do you think they should give themselves 3 months 6 months before they actually start finding um bugs consistently or at least find their first bug uh so so you mean how much time they should give to development or finding bugs how much time they should give to the actual bug hunting when they start hunting like let's say i i've done a bit of development and then now i want to start hunting how long do you think i should expect to find um my first bug ah oh, that's a tough one um if i compare it with my case uh i started bug bounties because 
I had a bug. I did not know about bug bounties, but I had a bug. I discovered yeah. bug bounties because of it, and um, uh, so it wasn't the similar case for me. Uh, like spending three months or four months finding my first job wasn't the case. For me. I cannot relate. Uh, our time. <laughs> Okay. Um what what was the bug? What do you want to talk about that first one that you ended up, you know, finding bug bunnies? I know you posted on Twitter that one night you were supposed to go out to a party and then you didn't go. That's when you started bug bunny. Yeah. So, I was poking at at a Yahoo application. Yeah. Uh, they were leaking emails of the users like in plain uh, just just op- I did not do anything. Just view the APIs and they were just leaking emails. uh so I knew that was something unfavorable so I had to report it somewhere and found there exists hacker one and they have a program over there so I just reported them okay you have submitted something like 157 vulnerabilities on hacker one um I'm still trying to sift through most of them and see what they actually were uh, for the ones that were disclosed but what's the majority of those findings are the account takeovers like you said csrfs ssrfs yep uh uh so i've been uh, very much interested in oauth bugs and most of the applications uses oauth and back in 2017 18 even till now there exists misconfigurations in oauth uh yeah so I mainly focused on those areas uh and found a lot of issues related with what that leads to account takeovers. So, yeah. Okay, let's get a bit more technical with this OAuth stuff. What exactly are you looking at? Are you looking at the implementation of like the state parameter or is it like the implicit grant? What exactly are you looking for? What's the most common thing you found at least? I've also documented this in one of my blogs. Uh, yeah. So uh, when you use OAuth, uh, there the application generates uh, an access token, right, for for authorizing the users. Yeah. And what happens is if another application has generated a token for the same user, and if it works on the first application the first application accepts that token generated for the other application that means any second app any any third any any second application can access the users of user accounts of uh users registered on the first application is that the most common thing you find it used to be the most common one uh in 2019 18 a lot yeah but you won't find these misconfigurations these days uh uh but still some of them exist okay well in terms of finding bugs these days you recently did your 30k in 30 days challenge can you touch about that where did it come from um did you get inspiration from someone else that was doing it Oh uh, so in the month of December so there is one of one of the program it's one of my favorite program so yeah they were running a 2x bounty uh, yeah for a, for a month so i was pretty much interested in that because uh, i've been working on that program since two years mm-hmm. uh was top 3 in that program i knew and you said this is a private program it's it's a private program yeah okay uh, so i was uh very uh i i knew what the program was how the application works um uh, i had a lot of information about the target so yeah. i knew what to find what to look out for so that really helped uh making like from that particular program i i made around 2025k um and rest of the bounties came from another bug that i discovered uh it's kind of a um, misconfiguration but but uh i i still need to uh deep dive into it and see how 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 much uh, it can be abused 
Uh, so it's still in progress, um, but yeah. Uh, okay. So the police came through that as well. Okay. Um, for this 30K in 30 days, you tagged both Hacker One and Bug Crowd. What's the main platform that you usually find programs on? I mostly hack on Hacker One. Hacker One? Yeah. Okay. And do you think it's easy for people to start getting invited to private programs? If you're finding bugs regularly, then you will get invites. Okay. Let me rephrase this question. How easy do you think it is for someone to find bugs on a public program? Because everyone's hunting on a public program, right? Yep. Uh, so when I started, Yahoo was a public program. I in, the, in that same year, I was ranked number five on Yahoo, even though it was a public program. And yeah. I started bug bounties that year. I don't think uh, it's that difficult to find if 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 you, if 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 you really want to find something on a program, you will find something out of it. And I think even if you find a couple of issues, you will get an and any revenue. Okay, that's pretty cool. You talked about luck. You touched about luck. Um, what do you think that is exactly? I know, I think my definition of luck would be when preparation meets an opportunity, you can exploit it and then people call you lucky. But if you're not prepared for something and an opportunity comes about, um, people are like, ah, I'm lucky, you get it next time. What do you think luck is exactly when it comes to bug bounty? So it's uh, finding the right thing at the right time and when no one is seeing that thing. Uh, so that has happened a lot with me. But uh, the thing is, uh, I have done, I have experience in certain areas of, of security, uh, of, for example, in iOS, most of the people doesn't hack on iOS because they don't find comfortable hacking on iOS. So I yeah. find it very comfortable with that. So it gives me a leverage to use all my knowledge in what I've learned in development to execute and the bug bounties uh, it pays off. So to start hacking on iOS, um, same thing, do some certification or learn how to build iOS applications and then you can start finding security issues? Hopefully, yes. That's what I did. Okay. Um, someone in my Discord asked this question. Uh, considering you're one of the bug hunters that makes a drastic amount of money, have you set yourself up as a business? Do you have like an LLC? Because there are benefits, at least in the US, there are benefits attached to having a business that's like a separate entity, things like limited liability or tax write-offs. Um, how do you navigate that? Uh, so it's about uh, handling taxes with bug bounties. Yeah, how does how do you handle that? Do you have like a separate business that gets the income from your bug bounty, or is it just the same entity as you, Babu Shane? Uh it's it's a different entity uh, that I receive bounties from, uh, and it is marked as a business income. Uh, so it's tagged separately on that. Okay. Do you ever like buy stuff just so you can like get? Tax write-offs. Is that how it works in India? Yeah. Uh, so, so business there are, expenses. So, so yeah, there, there are multiple things that you can leverage. Uh, there are provisions where uh, you can buy some uh, electronics items, for example, phones and stuff like that, and you can market its expenses. Apart from that, uh, there are uh, uh, certain provisions where you don't have to declare any business expense, but you can cut like 50 posts and you can take 50 posts and as a business expenses and pay tax on 50 and rest of the money. Uh, yeah. So, so there are multiple things uh, you can avail uh, based on what, how, how, how much you can save taxes on. Okay. So considering you're doing this yourself, you would recommend it to other people, right? I think everyone does that. Yeah, as far as I know, who are doing bug bounties in India, they are leveraging some kind of uh, stuff like this. 
to save taxes. Okay, I've I've never really seen anyone talk about it because it's probably not that security relevant. Maybe that's why people don't talk about it. It's, but it's, it's actually really important uh, because if you're not uh, showing it as as a business income, you can really uh, will be giving a lot of taxes. Uh, so it's yeah. really important. You should uh, gather your financial advisor for that. Ask them how you can save taxes on this particular kind of income. If you cannot do this on your own, uh, it will save a lot of money. Okay, Bavuk. I don't think I have any other specific questions. Do you have anything you'd like to talk about or share? Nothing much. I've covered most of the things. Uh, but it was great talking to you. Uh, Tadi. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I will link your socials in the description. Do you have a favorite platform that you usually engage with people on Twitter, LinkedIn? Yeah, mostly Twitter and LinkedIn. Mostly Twitter and LinkedIn? Yeah. Okay. So we've heard it from the horse's mouth. Learn to develop applications. Take maybe a developer certification as compared to a security certification. I've never really heard that one. That's really interesting. But yeah, thank you, Bavug, for your time. You have a good day.